Hello, everybody. Good day, good morning, good afternoon, good wherever you are. And I'm happy to have everyone join us today. We are doing our second installment of our um, uh, Get Microsoft 365 Certified or Developer Certified. Uh, and today, on our second installment, we are focused on Microsoft Graph. So I'm really thrilled, glad that everybody is joining us uh, today. Really was thrilled with the response that we got. Uh, from the one that we had um, uh, two days ago, where we focused on Microsoft identity. So I'm really looking forward to doing this one uh, with you again today. Uh, curious, just uh, how many of you joined us? If you want to raise your hand in Zoom, how many of you uh, joined us uh, yesterday? So getting a whole lot of hands up. Look at that, it's great. Okay, you can put all your hands down and you can put them back up again and you can put them back down again. All right, cool. That's awesome. Um, that's your developer calisthenics for the day. We always have to start, you know, get our developers to do more than just kind of moving your fingers around. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with today's session. Really quick, my name is Andrew Connell. I'm going to be your host uh, for the webinar today. Um, I've been doing, my background in this whole thing is I've been doing uh, SharePoint development for about 17, 18 years now. Um, I've been doing uh, Microsoft 365 development or Office 365 development now for well, really since it came out. Um, and I spent a lot of time both in, well, in SharePoint framework, um, spending a lot more time recently in uh, Microsoft Teams-based development. And then both of those, um, you're always using uh, things like Microsoft Identity and the Microsoft Graph. So I've really got a lot of experience with those as well. Those are four of the five workloads that we have in the um, Microsoft 365 de certified developer uh, program. The fifth one is Office add-ins. Um, actually, I'm going getting ahead of myself. Let me finish the intro real quick. Um, I'm also an MVP. <laughs> getting ahead of myself too fast there. I'm also an MVP for Office development. I've been an MVP since 2005, I think it was, maybe 2007. Um, started out doing something called Microsoft Content Management Server, if anybody's heard of that. Uh, then I did SharePoint. Then I moved in. Then for a while, I was listed as um, Office apps and services, which means I'm an IT pro, which is could not be farther from the truth. Um, and they finally fixed it. Now I'm office developer. Um, I also have a podcast that I co-host uh, with a guy named Chris Johnson, where we have weekly episodes uh, about the Microsoft cloud. Um, and then uh, I also uh, have a SharePoint framework uh, tr online training course, a developer training course um, that I offer through my company, uh, Voitanos. Uh, if you're interested in that, we're doing a special deal for the month of May, 30% um, off on our fundamentals bundle. Um, and then we're running a special thing as well for those people who have been hard hit by the global pandemic. If you've lost your job, if you've been furloughed, if you've had your hours cut, um, we want to do something to help out. And so um, not only are we doing the 30% off, but if you've been affected and lost your job, then I want to help get you skilled up. Um, so that when the economies come back that you can hit the ground running. And so we're doing our deepest discount we've ever done, 60% um, off. Um, it makes my, it makes the course that's normally $449, drops it all the way down to $179. We're doing that deal um, throughout the month of May um, as well. We just need a little bit of proof that you aren't like scamming us and that you truly are, you know, you've lost your, um, that, that you are truly affected, but your job is truly affected by it. Um, but if you're interested in that stuff, then you can definitely reach out to me uh, through uh, Facebook Messenger or um, the Facebook Messenger or just send us an email and we'll definitely, we can definitely uh, get you hooked up. Um, the other thing that's cool too is that 5% of all uh, of um, uh, the revenues that we get in the month of May will all be donated uh, to uh, local food banks. Um, so we've already donated up to, I think it's um, our, the donations already up to 1500 meals is what we've done so far. Sorry, 1400 meals um, is what we've, is what we've done. So pretty thrilled with that. Um, but you can see how to contact me if you're, if you're interested in those things. Um, you tuned in though for the content of the webinar. So let me focus on that. Um, let me first start this webinar today with an overview of what the certification is, what the exam is. Let me answer a couple questions. I know that if you guys tune, if some of you tuned in uh, for the previous webinar, and if you tune in for the other ones, I'm gonna do this at the beginning of each one and explain what the exam is and what the certification is, because not everybody's tuning into all of them. So 
please bear with me. We're going to get to the Microsoft Graph in just a minute, but I need to make sure I cover this for everyone. Um, Microsoft 365 uh, developer workloads, specifically developer workloads, the things that Microsoft focuses on, um, or at least related to the certification and the exam, um, are these five workloads. Um, Microsoft Identity, which really is just Azure AD. Um, it all, Microsoft Identity also includes Microsoft accounts, but we're not interested in those today. We are only interested in, um, my, in uh, uh, Azure AD um, because that's what is really related to uh, the uh, Microsoft 365. Um, we also have Microsoft Graph. Uh, that's what we're covering today. That is the API for everything that you're gonna wanna get to inside of Microsoft 365. Uh, SharePoint is another one of those, specifically SharePoint Online. We will look at that in a future uh, webinar. Microsoft Teams, that's another one. And then the final one is Office add-ins. Those are the, these are the five separate workloads um, that Microsoft is focused on. Little footnote, when I say Office add-ins, I'm not talking about those SharePoint hosted or self-hosted or um, SharePoint hosted or provider hosted add-ins. We're talking about the extensions that you can build for Office clients like Word, Excel, Outlook, uh, PowerPoint, and how you can go through and extend by creating custom um, task panes or content um, uh, uh, add-ins, or like in the case of Office, sorry, in the case of Outlook, um, compose and read uh, add-ins for new emails or messages and calendar invites. So these are the five workloads that we cover uh, in this. Now you're probably wondering, well, why would I want to listen to this guy? Why, why, did, why should I trust him talking about the certification? Well, for a couple of reasons, right? Now we are going to do a webinar at the very end of this entire series. The very last one is a behind the scenes. So you want to see how they, or hear how they really do this. I'm going to, I'm going to pull back the curtain and share with you everything I'm allowed to share with you um, on how Microsoft creates um, one of these certifications. Uh, because I was heavily involved uh, in helping them not only develop the content or the topics that we're going to be that you're going to be tested on, um, but I've also been involved in uh, helping them build content, uh, learning content for it, which I'll go through in a minute. Um, hey, while we're going through this, just as a little bit of housekeeping, if you got a question, please feel free to post a question to the question and answer panel. Um, I will address those as they come in, um, if they're related to specifically what I'm talking about. Otherwise, we'll get to the very end and we'll answer all the questions. Um, if you are posting questions in the chat, I can't promise that I'm going to see those because those, a lot of people just have like, are just, you know, making comments during the session. So if you're talking, if you have a real question, I really recommend you put it in the QA panel to make sure that we're going to see it because that's where I'm going to focus on stuff. Um, this isn't like a hangout session, so I'm not going to, I have the chat up, but I can't keep up on, up on it the whole time. Okay. So again, why would you want to trust me on this? Well, I've taken the, and not only did I help you, I've, I've helped build the certification, um, but I've also taken the exam. Um, I was not involved in writing any of the questions. Uh, I wasn't allowed to, that would have been a conflict of interest, um, but I have been involved in, uh, I was involved in helping uh, figure out the topics that were gonna be covered. Um, these are the results from when I took it. So I took it back at the beginning of January when the exam was still in beta. And what they do is they have an alpha phase and a beta phase, and then they have like the GA phase, kind of like software. Um, I wasn't allowed to take the alpha in the alpha phase. That was part of a, um, uh, what do you call it? It was kind of a, a conflict of interest. Um, but they did encourage me to take it during the beta phase. So I jumped in, I took it. The beta was really just, they were, they wanted to get people to take it because they have a, re and I'll explain this in that last webinar when we did the behind the scenes, but they do have a very scientific process in figuring out our questions, good or bad, um, based on what people's, uh, um, results were with those certain questions. So um, I had to answer a bunch of stuff up front to kind of explain my experience. And then based on my experience, they should have been able to say, okay, this person should pass or they should do well in this section or should do well in that section. Let's see how they do. Um, the beta is over, so you can't go take the beta again. Um, it is now available for GA or, or generally available. Anybody can go take it now. And this is showing, I mean, I, pa I, I passed the exam. Um, so I am Microsoft 365 Certified Developer Associate. Yeah, I'll explain what that means in a minute. But I wanted to show you just so you know you can trust me and like where I am. And being completely transparent, you know, where did I do well? Where did I not do as well? Um, and you can see, you know, Microsoft Graph, which is still ironic to me, I did the best in the Microsoft Graph section, which is what we're talking about today, which 
I would have expected I would have done really well in SharePoint, which I did, but I would I was I, I was a little embarrassed. I was like, wow, I did better in graph than in SharePoint. So hey, whatever. It still worked. Um, in order to pass, you have to get a 70% on uh, on the entire exam. So as you can see here, I mean, I got better than a 90% on most of the sections. I think I got like a 96 in the graph section. Um, but like in office, I was just below 80% um, in that one. I think it was about 75% um, on that one uh, for office add-ins. But you can see there, just that's my experience is building this. And I'll dive into this in a lot more depth um, as well uh, when we um, uh, do that last webinar on the behind the scenes. It's the sixth one in the series. So we'll do that in what, like, I think it's two weeks from today, I think is what it is. Yeah, it should be right. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the exam and the certification and just how this whole thing is structured, okay? Um, the, the, exam is, um, the exam is called, is, is the code for it is MS600, and it is uh, called the Building Applications and Solutions with Microsoft 365 Core Services. Um, you can see a link to that if you just go to that first link right there. That's a case-sensitive link, so make sure it's VTNSIO slash MS600 exam. Um, that is, um, that link, is, that is all about uh, uh, where you're gonna learn more stuff about the exam. It's gonna include um, a link to a skills assessment, which is gonna be some of the stuff that I'm gonna cover today. Uh, and some of the stuff that I'm actually working on uh, for the, um, uh, for the, uh, um, well, sorry, that's some of the stuff that I'm working on and uh, still working on for this and what I used in the basis for some of these different webinars. Um, that skills uh, assessment is also part of, oops, you know what I just did? I just realized one moment. I totally screwed up. There. Now my audio should be a lot better. I apologize. I totally forgot. I have my microphone out and everything, but I forgot to turn it on. So my webcam was catching my audio. That should sound a little bit better. <laughs> so I apologize for that. A bit of a rookie mistake right there. Now I see why someone was saying, ah, oh, it didn't sound so good. No bathroom echo. Ah, oh, I wasn't in the bathroom, I promise. I didn't do the Supreme Court thing that happened yesterday where someone was doing Supreme Court. Well, whatever. <clears throat> okay. Um, let me go back on my slide. All right, so um, yeah, so that's the exam. So when, when, the way it works is that once the only prerequisite for the course or for the certification is you have to pass that one exam. Once you pass the exam, you are then certified. So the certification is called the Microsoft 365 Certified Developer Associate. I'll explain why, why it's called Developer Associate in just a minute. But you don't, to get that certification, you just have to pass the exam. It's the only thing you have to do, right? So it, the, the exam is all you really care about, okay? That's really all you care about. When someone, uh, when you, when you want to put it on your resume, I would put the, the, the actual certification on there and not the exam. The exam is really what you need to focus on in terms of what do I need, what do I need to do. Now, let me explain a little bit here about how Microsoft is measuring how Microsoft Learning measures developers, or it's a group in Microsoft called Worldwide Learning, WWL. Um, and what they do, the way that they measure developers um, is they say, we have three different levels. You've got the foundational level, you've got the associate level, and you've got the expert level. Now they have their definitions, and these definitions I'm gonna give you are very close to that, but I find it these are a little bit easier to understand because they use all these other ways of classifying it. Foundational, that is somebody that if you're familiar with the Microsoft roles that uh, different employee roles, and you've ever worked with somebody called it that's been labeled a TSP, a technical solutions provider. This is like a technical salesperson, or this is somebody who I could, if I was foundational in my knowledge, then I should be able to walk in to a customer. They have some questions about some stuff. So we're talking about graph today. So let's use that as our context. I walk into a customer they have, here's the thing that we want to solve. And I can say, yes, we can do that with the Microsoft Graph. They have these different endpoints. Here's the things that we're going to talk about. I would be able to say things like, you know, you're doing, you want to do this thing with SharePoint administration? No, you're not going to be able to do that with the Graph APIs. They don't do that. They focus more on lists and libraries and sites. 
Um, they don't go and talk about how do you create site collections and, and new tenants and stuff like that. So I would at least have knowledge on being able to say what is possible, what is not possible. Um, I would understand the things like, oh yeah, that not every single permission out there has a delegated option and an application per, uh, 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 option as well. Um, I know what things like um, the Microsoft, the, the Graph um, Explorer tool, I know what that is. I know those kinds of things. I know what SDKs are available and generally and stuff like that. And I could help design a system for someone or design an application like on an iPad or on a cocktail napkin or something like that. But as a foundational person, I may not be able to sit down at my laptop and start building an application that's going to use Microsoft Graph. My knowledge, my experience level might stop right about there, right? Somebody at the associate level is someone who has been working with the technology. It should have an experience in working the technology about for about four years, right? Now, I know that that, that's, that is not a very exact number because if you look at some of the other things you're going to get tested on with the exam, like Microsoft Teams and SharePoint Framework, they haven't been around for four years. So don't take that literally. But just think that if you, if you knew somebody, you know, you're looking at their resume and they said, I've been driving for four years. You're like, okay, you've been driving for four years then you generally understand the, the rules of the road and you've been through some pretty good experience, right? It's very different from somebody saying, I've been driving for four months, right? And that's kind of what they're looking for. This kind of a person should be able to not only design the system, but be able to sit down and actually build an application that uses Microsoft Graph and be able to say and know things like, I need this permission, or I need that permission, or that's not gonna be possible without an application permission, which is gonna mean we're gonna to need to get a global tenant administrator to approve this. It's stuff like that, okay? Um, the next level up is the expert level. And an expert is somebody who can teach. That's somebody who can sit down and they can teach somebody to become an associate, okay? Now, the way you're going to be, the way Microsoft is, is designed to test you, the way that they built this certification is at the associate level, which means they're looking for people who have that four year experience. Now, here's a little bit of inside baseball. And that's a phrase that we use. Uh, it's a, uh, uh, um, what do you call it? It's a phrase you use to kind of say, here's like some behind the scenes kind of stuff, right? Um, when we sat down to do this um, and they explained to us, here's what we're going to try and do. And I'll go into this in more depth in the, in the, last, uh, we, in the last webinar. Um, but we, I, I was of the opinion that there was no way that we could have an exam that tested you at the associate level at, at all five of these different workloads. Because in order to have an exam that does that, Microsoft has to have a class that they can sell you or sell to partners that they can then go sell to customers to where they can sit down and they can get that experience. And based on the things that we're going to be tested on, I was of the opinion, as long with, with a bunch of other people, including people from, from the different product groups, that was going to be impossible because you're going to have a class that was going to be three or four weeks long. Um, I know how much, how long it takes to get associate level certified at the SharePoint level. And that, that's not, a, that's not just a two or three day thing. So um, what the idea was, what, when they originally, when the, when the exam was kind of designed, it was your, um, you're, you're supposed to be associate level at Microsoft identity and at the uh, graph, Microsoft graph level. But the other three workloads, SharePoint, Microsoft Teams, and Office add-ins are supposed to be more at the foundational level. That's the way it was supposed to work out. But I can tell you from my experience, there were questions on there that I, that were, I, I would definitely put them in the associate level for everything in the course, right? When you're being asked about specific APIs, I, I, can't, I, I, I can't see that as being a foundational thing. I would never ask a salesperson to do that. So that's the level that you're gonna get tested at. Okay, before we dive into this, before we start talking about, oh, uh, one more thing. Um, this is, as I mentioned a couple of times, this is a uh, one of six uh, webinars that I'm doing on a series called Get Microsoft 365 Developer Certified. This is the second one. We did one two days ago on Microsoft Identity. Today we're doing Microsoft Graph. I've got one on SharePoint, Microsoft Teams. I got Office add-ins. And then we've also got one on behind the scenes. You see all the dates listed there. If you missed the one from the first, from that we did earlier this week, it was recorded and available for you to watch on demand. 
And you can also go register for all the additional ones in the future. Go to that link at the bottom of the slide. Um, I've color coded it because it's a bunch of words put together and I made sure that because these, these short links are case sensitive, um, I made sure everything was lowercase uh, and um, I just color coded it just to make sure it was easy to read. So it's basically vtns.io slash get M365 dev certified series. You go there, it takes you to a blog post on the Voitanos blog that has, that I will continuously update that will point to a link to where you can watch the recorded version uh, or the record, recorded instance of the webinar, uh, which I'm posting about 24 hours ish um, after the, um, the webinar concludes um, and where you can, uh, where the links are, where you can register for any of the additional ones. You, when you register for a webinar, you only register for one. You don't register for all of them at once. All right, so it's, it's one by one by one. Okay, now, before we get started, I have a question for you. I'm curious, how many of you are planning to go get certified and go take the exam and become certified? I'm just curious, maybe some of you are gonna do it, maybe some of you are like going, ah, I just tuned into this, I wanna see what this is all about. Um, I'd be curious, you know, there's a poll that I, that's, that's shown up here and the Zoom client, so make sure you vote on the poll. Um, it'd be, uh, I, I'd be curious if somebody was like, no, I'm not about to take this exam. Like, well, why are you tuning in here? So I don't know. Okay. So let's leave this up for another seven, six, five seconds here to see. We got about, uh, let's see how many people, 73% people have voted. Uh, about, okay. Three, two, one, and we'll wrap the poll up right there. All right. 70% of you who are joining us today are saying yes. I am planning on taking this exam. The other 25% are saying, or sorry, the other 30% are saying maybe. No one is saying I'm not taking it or I've already taken it. So I should have voted because I have taken it. But anyway, any rate, okay, so that's it. Now we're gonna come back. I'm gonna ask you about this in a second. You see all these, let me ask you one more question here. Actually, two more questions. So you see here we've got all these different workloads, right, and all these different workloads. Now, let me ask you two questions here. Again, I just posted another poll on, the, on the, the webinar. Of all five of these different workloads, the first question is, which one are you the strongest at? And then the second question is, which one are you the weakest or have the least amount of experience at? And be honest, these things are anonymous. I can't tell who's, who's answering what. I'm just trying to get a bead on what the responses are. Um, and no surprise, a lot of most people, wow, bias, overwhelming margin here. SharePoint is, is by far the winner. Oh my goodness, we're way over 90% on SharePoint for the strongest stuff. All right, so we'll come back. Uh, let's see, let's leave this open for another like 10 seconds here. Got 70% of you have voted. Come on, let's get it up there. Let's get up there. Let's have a really good showing. We want to have a good turnout right here in the United States. It's election, it's election year. We, we're voting for, um, we have a presidential election in November. So we want good turnout. We want everybody to have their voice counted. And let's go ahead and stop it now. Okay, so great votes. We got 70%, 75% of you have voted. Over 95% of you said SharePoint is your strongest. 3% said identity. I'm not surprising. Only one person said graph is the strongest thing for them. So you're in a great spot today. Everybody else is in a great spot today. How's that? Um, now the weakest, this isn't surprising. This is what I see a lot of. Over 60% of you said that office add-ins is the, is, the, is the hardest. Let me share these. There we go. You guys should be able to see that. So um, uh, where is it? Office add-ins is by far the, the uh, one that you are the weakest at. I get it. Totally get it. Um, and then from the next two are kind of a tie between identity and graph. They're about 15% um, a piece. Cool. All right. So let's go ahead and dive in. Let's start. Let's, let's go ahead and let's start diving into the content here and let's look at what uh, we've got. Um, Let's look and see what we're gonna do here with, with, with Graph. Okay, specifically around Microsoft, and I, I did see one question. Let me answer that question before we get in here. So Mark's got a question, says, do we look at security and compliance in any of the workloads keen to understand the complexities of activity and protection alerts as well as DLP? No, none of the stuff, none of that's covered in any of um, the, in, in any of the exam or the certification, remember, this is a developer certification. It is not an IT pro certification. Those would all be considered administrative slash IT pro slash architecture things. 
Those are, are not developer topics and you will not, you do not have to know anything about that stuff or like Intune or like DLP or any of that stuff. Cool. So, uh, and I saw another question came in. Somebody asked why are add-ins considered the least in the survey? I don't get it. Could you explain why you get it? So, so office add-ins, the reason why I say that I'm, that I understand that office add-ins are the, the, the thing people are the weakest at is because that is the, um, of all the APIs that we see people working with and extensibility things that we see working with of those five, I, we, I, we generally in the community, we generally see the fewest developers building extensions for office clients. That's all I mean by that. In my experience, that's what I see. Um, some people, you know, may do it a ton. Um, but in the va overall, we don't see many people end up building extensions. Um, that's the only reason I say it like that. Okay. Um, so we answered that one and let's see. Uh, Don's got one more question here. Let's do, let's do one more before we dive into the content. This will be the last one for a little bit. Don's asking as primarily a SharePoint framework developer, I feel like I should refactor my services to use Microsoft graph instead of the SharePoint rest API pros and cons. You know what? Let's do that at the end. That's a longer discussion and I'd rather do that one at the very end. So we will come back to that, but not right now. Got to stick around to the end Don. I have an opinion on that, but we'll go. Well, I want to make sure I give you the, the full story. Okay. As far as the certification goes, let's talk about language. Let's talk about what kinds of things you need to know. I said I was going to go over that in the um, when I when I uh, when you registered for the webinar. So I want to make sure you understand what these things are. The Microsoft Graph questions are going to account for about a quarter, about twenty percent to twenty five percent of the questions that are going to show up on your exam. What you see on your exam may be different from what somebody else sees on, on their exam. There are a pool of questions and the testing platform figures out a randomized question to, to ask you, right? And it does things, it kind of like learns what it should be asking you. It's got an adaptive kind of a test, okay? Um, these questions, uh, you, so some stuff you may see that your friend may not see or vice versa. The focus that they really wanted to put on this is almost entirely on the SDKs. So you, you, you need to know the Microsoft Graph SDKs primarily. They do not test you all that much on the REST API endpoints of the Graph SDK, of, of the Microsoft Graph. Now you do have to know some stuff about the REST API, but not the intricacies behind it. And I find this interesting because as you'll see as some of those topics I'm gonna to go through, you really do need to understand how the REST API works, but the questions that you get don't really reflect that at least from, from my experience in taking the, the question and taking the exam. Um, another thing too, when it talks, I don't have this on the slide, but when we talk about languages, for the most part, it is almost entirely .NET core is what you're going to be, is the code, are the code samples that you're going to look at uh, when you're in the Microsoft Graph section, almost entirely .NET core. Um, there may be a little bit of TypeScript-ish or JavaScript-ish stuff that shows up, but not really all that much. If, if I'm correct in my recollection um, and from the notes that I, I took after the exam, I think that the only thing related to like JavaScript and, share, and, and Microsoft Graph was coming from the SharePoint framework section of the exam, okay? Um, the other thing too about the exam that's kind of nice is you, you, the bank of the questions all stick to one of the workloads at once. So you don't have like a graph question and then a SharePoint question and then a Teams question, and maybe another Teams question and moving things around. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Um, it is, you kind of get all of your identity stuff, you get all of your graph stuff, you get all of your SharePoint. You get, generally you get through a section and then you move on to the next one, right? Which was kind of good because I know when I got to the office add-in section, I was like, oh my God. And it just kind of was like, I'm getting beaten up, I'm getting beaten up. And then it's like, oh, now I'm back into SharePoint. Here we go. I'm in SharePoint, we're good. Um, as far as options for like self-paced learning, I got a link there to a learning path um, that I actually built for Microsoft um, that's up there. So um, I, Microsoft hired me to build out their self-paced learning for the entire, um, for the entire uh, uh, MS 600 exam. Um, so I was involved in helping define the topics that people should be tested on. And I was 
involved in building the self-paced learning. I was not involved in writing the questions for the exam. That would have been a conflict of interest. And I was also not involved in writing the instructor-led course that Microsoft sells for the exam. Not only would that have been a conflict of interest, um, but furthermore, and you'll see why in a few minutes, um, but furthermore, it is, that is, that, um, man, their requirement to write that course was, was ridiculous. They wanted it done in a ridiculous amount of time. And there was just, I, I was like, there's no way you can do an adequate job in the limited amount of time that you guys have. And it was, well, we have to release it by this date. Like, I don't work like that. It's, you can get it done. Like a person can have a baby in nine months, put two people on it. Still going to take nine months. Okay. All right, so I see a couple of questions coming in about the exam itself. I'm gonna, we're gonna punt those for a bit. Let's focus on Microsoft Graph for a bit because that's what we tuned in for. And I'm happy to go into those questions if we have time for them at the end. Let's talk about what you're, what's gonna be covered on the, in the graph section. So there are a couple of main themes that you need to be aware of. And this is one of the ones that goes back to what I was saying a second ago, that you need, that they only are gonna really test you on the SDK like the .NET SDK for Microsoft Graph, and they don't really test you on the REST API so much. But there will be questions that you really do need to know the REST API. So they kept pushing all the time. They kept telling me I was writing the content. It's like, you need to focus on the SDK, focus on the SDK. I'm like, yeah, but they have to know this too. And that's like what they call query parameters, right? These are um, O data operators that we can use. And these are ways that you go through and you essentially are doing like, the select, the where clause, the order buys, the filters. Um, it's all that stuff that you're, that you're, that you're going to be putting in um, to your, um, uh, that you'd be putting into your queries if you were writing uh, REST, REST based queries. Okay. Um, you need to know what the select uh, parameter is. What is that? Right. That's allowing you to say, I only want these fields to come back. If I don't put that in my query, then I'm gonna get a default set of data come back to me, right? What am I gonna get? Well, it depends on the entity that you're going for. If you're trying to get a user, you get specific things. If you're going for this other thing, you're gonna be getting specific things. And it, it really does depend on, it really does depend on what your, um, uh, it really does depend on what your, your, your setup is, okay? Um, Now, another thing you know is the, is the filter query parameter. Now that's the second one, the first one on here. It should have been the second. But the filter, this is how you're gonna be able to do like a where clause, like a normal SQL statement where clause. This is where you say, I only want people whose last name starts with the letter C, or I only want people who are in the marketing department, stuff like that. And so you need to understand how to use the filter parameter to write queries um, using the SDK and using their Fluent API on how to get only subsets of uh, data coming back. You have to know how to um, order the results um, that you get back. How would you control that? How do you sort them? I wanna get things in ascending order or descending order by a specific field, or I wanna do it on multiple fields. How do you control that using the order by query parameter and with the equivalent SDK thing? How do you do paging with the results that come back. If you go to query for, if I've got 10,000 people in my organization and I say, give me all the users who start with the letter C, am I gonna get everybody back? How do I know that if I, did, I didn't get everybody back? How do I say I only want five of those people back? Okay, well, what if you're on page four of the data? How do I figure out what page I'm on? How do I, how do I only get certain data back from Microsoft Graph on a page by page basis? And you're gonna do that using the skip parameter and the top parameter. Top is gonna to say, give me just five records back. Skip says, you're on page three, then start at number 15 and get me, oh, sorry, start on number 11 and get me the next five, right? Because 11 through 15, that's, the, that's page three. You have to know how to use that stuff. You need to know how to use, I uh, see a question that just came in and I just said that. Um, you also need to know how to expand related entities. So for example, there's a user entity and that user has a manager. Well, that manager entity is actually a user object. But when you say, give me all the information about Andrew, it doesn't automatically expand. His manager is his wife. And so, it, true story. And 
uh, he doesn't, so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't show me what her name is. It just has a record to that somebody over there, but I can in my query say, expand the manager entity and give me the user object for Meredith, right? Um, you can also retrieve the total count of all the matching uh, resources that come back. So instead of saying, give me all the users that is letter, whose name starts with the letter C, and then you get this giant result set back or the max result set based on the number of items, but you don't need all that data. You just want to say, how many do I have? And instead of that, you can tell Microsoft Graph, just give me the sum of all of those people. Don't, don't make me go create that. Um, don't make me do that for each uh, individual one. And what that allows you to do is that will uh, uh, allow you to save from having a whole bunch of data coming down and slowing your application down, right? Um, you also need to know how to do a search. Some, not all, but some resources, some entities in Microsoft Graph do support search. And this one's kind of interesting. I don't, I don't think the support for this is fantastic. Um, but I think that you are, you need to, um, you need to make sure you look at the SDK to see what entities do support searching, uh, and really just understand how to use search, right? So when you go and you look at the search endpoint, I would look for the, in the, in the docs, if you look for the search, uh, uh, page, um, in the graph docs, it'll actually point to, Hey, here's where you go to, um, here's some examples. Focus on the examples, wink, wink. Um, you also need to determine the appropriate SDK that you wanna leverage. What do I mean by that? This is a really simple one. If you're using JavaScript or TypeScript, you wanna use the JavaScript SDK. If you're using .NET, you probably wanna use the .NET SDK. If you're in Python, guess which one you're gonna use? The Python SDK. Pretty easy, huh? Dead giveaway. Okay, next thing. This is a big area that they really, wanted, they really wanted to focus on the exam. Because if you've been working with Graph in the last year or so, two years, you know that throttling is an issue or it can be an issue. And it, at least it's, a, um, it's definitely a topic. It's definitely something you wanna pay attention to. And so um, what they have this section here on optimizing network traffic. So you need to understand really two different aspects to this. Number one, let's say, actually it's, it's three. You need to know three aspects to this. So number one, you need to understand what is throttling and how do I identify when I'm being throttled? Like, why am I being throttled? How do I identify it's happening? And how, um, uh, how, do I, how, do, how, do I, how can I tell when the app is actually doing that? What does it mean? So that's one major thing you need to understand. Another thing that you, um, that you need to understand related to throttling is how do I deal with it? How do I deal with it within my app? How do I, um, how do I like, how do, how do I mitigate it? How can I, if, it, if I am throttled, right? sorry, there's, okay, let, let me start with the, with the section for a second. There's three things you need to know. Number one is what is throttling? How do I identify that I'm being throttled? Um, and what triggers it? Number two, if I'm being throttled, how do, I, how do I deal with it? How do I handle it? Should my app just break? Oh God, no, I hope not. But how do you deal with it? How do you gracefully deal with it? And how can you make sure that things, that, that your users, that you can communicate that to you, the users of your app? And then number three, how do you mitigate it? Like how do you, how do you avoid from being throttled, right? You really should strive in your apps, in my opinion, you should really strive in your apps to number one, don't do things that are going to get you throttled. But number two, you really need to make sure that it, if that you are detecting, that you're monitoring to see if you are getting throttled and if you are, how do you mitigate it or how do you address it? Right? It's like any kind of development stuff. You shouldn't write bugs, but you're going to do it. So you should use try catches and you should deal with exceptions. So how do you do this? So you should, in the category of um, how do I avoid them? Use these things called change notifications. Well, that's what they call them, which I can't stand the name. They're really webhooks. So the, you can subscribe to Graph and say, let me know when, the, when any entity in this collection changes or is added or deleted. And when, what that will do is that will then call out to your endpoint and let you know something changed. 
Now it may tell you that what changed may tell you what the change was, but the important part is it's going to tell you when something changes change. And the nice thing about that is that's going to allow us to not create an implementation that's going to pull Microsoft graph for what's changed, what's changed, what's changed, what's changed and have to do that like every five minutes. Instead, you should understand how to deal with that, like what the best practices are in dealing with uh, and, and being notified when things change. Second of all, the other thing that's going to, let me, um, let me skip one and go to the, the, third, op, the third thing there. You should also know um, how to, when you call Microsoft Graph, how to say, don't give me everything, but just give me the things that have changed since the last time I called you. And so that's a, tech, a, a technology called change query or delta query and, um, or track changes. They use all these different names, really delta query and track changes. And so what this is going to do is you need to have a way to go through and to pull to, to see what happened with that data. Okay. Um, the, the second one on the slide there is combining multiple requests. And so instead of sending a lot of, one of the things that can cause, um, can trigger throttling is lots of traffic back and forth between you and, and Microsoft Graph. And what you can do to avoid that is instead of making your app very chatty, if you're doing a bunch of things like I need to create four users and then get a list of all the users or all the calendar items, then I can say instead of doing five requests, which is create a user, create a user, create a user, create a user, and then go get issue a get request, I could instead say, let's do one request that does all five of those things inside of it, send it to Graph, let graph do that work. He'll have one response that he gets back and then I can parse that response out. And so it's a lot less traffic back and forth. You need to understand how batch works. You need to understand not so much about batch at the rest endpoint, how that, how you do it there, but more with the SDK. But I will tell you that there could be a question about the rest endpoint and using batch with rest endpoint. And then finally, you need to understand how to implement and how to deal with 429s. And specifically, I mean, by creating a 429 handler. Now, how do you do, what is that? So we're not gonna get into the all details of how to go about doing it, but a 429 is the HTTP status code you get when you're being throttled. You should, there are a couple of different patterns that you can implement um, and you should know how to do that, but then you should also know how to use the SDK, which will do all of that for you. But don't think that, oh, the SDK does it. I don't need to know how to go about doing it. You should know how to do it. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. So we answered that question. I'm going to dismiss that one. And I've already gone through some of that stuff. So I'll come back. I'll come back to the questions in a minute. All right. Now, there are three specific endpoints that Microsoft Graph is going to, that the, the exam focuses on. They don't, go, they don't cover everything. They only cover three specific endpoints or entities, users, files, and groups. Those are the three different ones you want to focus on. All the other ones you can completely ignore, like calendars, you can ignore it. Email, you can mostly ignore that. Um, I'm blanking on the other ones, but those users, groups, and the third one that I just forgot that I just mentioned a second ago. Files, exactly. <laughs> Good, I was testing you guys. Seriously, no. So let's talk about users. How do you get a reference to the currently signed in user from Microsoft Graph? You need to know how to do that. How do you get a list of all the users in the organization? You know how to do that. This is the part that gets tricky. How do you get the users, a, a, a specific user's profile photo and how do you change it? It's not as intuitive as you might think if you haven't done that before, make sure you studied up on that one. How do you get the user by a specific user? What, are your, what ways can you do that? Can you do that through an ID? What ID? The UID, the object ID, their email address. Make sure you know how to do those different things. And then how do you get the user's manager's profile? Like I mentioned earlier, how do I get that related entity? Those are things you should definitely, you should def, you definitely need to know. When you're working with files, right? This gets a, this gets a little tough. Um, you need to know how to get a list of all the files in the user's OneDrive. Now, again, remember that Microsoft Graph covers both consumer services like OneDrive consumer 
and it covers um, OneDrive for Business, right? And, and Microsoft 365. But remember, the Microsoft 365 certification exam and certification is all about 365. It's not about consumer. So you don't need to worry about working with consumer stuff. Only focus on, on um, OneDrive for Business, okay? So how do I get a list of all the files for the currently signed in user from their OneDrive for Business, right? How do you download a file from them? Like if you have a specific file you wanna download. How do you download a file, not just from their OneDrive, but how do you do it from a SharePoint site? Because SharePoint document libraries are just OneDrive, or OneDrive, sorry, OneDrive for Business is just SharePoint document libraries. So you need to understand, well, wait, how do I get a file if it's in SharePoint? How do I get a file if it's in OneDrive? Okay, make sure you, folk, make sure you study up on that. How do I get a, now here's, here's something. We have two insights uh, based things. How do I get a list of files that are trending around the current user? Stuff that they've worked on or stuff that people that they work with that they're working on. And then uh, let's see, let me skip one. Um, how do you get the user object from the owner list in a group and retrieve that user's files? There you go. So how do I figure out from a group who the, who the owner is of that group and get a list of all of their files. And this is, it's a scenario kind of a thing. You should know how to go about doing that. Now here's another one here. How do you upload a file to OneDrive? Not just any file. How do you upload a small file and how do you upload a large file? And what constitutes a large file? You should know how this works. You should know not, and even though I said it's mostly about the SDK, you should know how to do this both with the REST API and with the SDK, right? There's some cool tech that they, that they released at the end of uh, 2019 that will be included on the exam, that is, that is mentioned on the exam, um, but there's some cool stuff that they've done to make this uploading of large files a lot easier and creating like a resumable session type thing. So make sure you focus on that. All right, I think this is my last one. Yeah, so this is the last, the last uh, subject matter we'll, we'll go through and then I'll answer some of the questions we get. Um, how do you deal with groups? And specifically, how do you deal with like the group life cycle, right? And so what is a group? You need to understand like what an Office 365 group is and what a team is. Like, a, 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 like when you teamify an Office 365 group and what the difference is. So how do you get a list of all the groups in your org? How do you get information about a group by its ID? How do you get a list of the owners and the members in a group? How do you get a list of all the groups that the user, the currently signed in user is a member of or is an owner of? How do you create a group? How do you teamify a group? And then finally, how do you delete the group? You should understand how to do all of those different things, right? Um, pretty much from the SDK, pretty much just from the SDK. Okay. Um, and yeah. Okay. So there's that, that's all the stuff you need to know about groups. Now I got a bunch of questions here. We've got about 11 minutes left and I'm happy to run through all these questions. Um, it's going to take me a second to get through them. So if you've got a question, I'd strongly recommend you post it in the QA panel, but I am going to, we are going to cap it at, at the top of the hour or bottom of the hour, or whatever. I always forget which one that is, but whenever the hour is over in 11 minutes. So let's get going. Actually, before we get going to that, there's one thing I do want to ask you guys and kind of a, uh, a selfish uh, question that I've got here, but so I will, one quick explanation. So I, uh, if you're not familiar with me, I have, I'm a SharePoint framework developer. And my company, Voitanos, I have a SharePoint framework development class um, that I sell. I mentioned it at the beginning, and it's all on demand, all video based class. Um, the class is almost complete. And once it is complete, I plan on working on a and releasing a like a boot camp kind of thing uh, for the M6, MS600 exam on how you can get ramped up, how you can study for it. Um, it is not going to be, it, I'm, I, don't, I can't tell you exactly how much it's going to cost or how big the class is, but it's not going to be a gigantic class. It's not going to be very expensive. And the reason why I say that is because Microsoft hired me to build a bunch of self-paced material. I don't plan on rehashing all of that material. In fact, I'd rather just point you to that material and just give you the other stuff that you need to know that 
the material doesn't cover because I know the material that I wrote for the, for the, for the course. And then I've also, I also know the questions that were asked and I know the things that were not in the material that they asked me to write that you will be tested on. So I want to make sure I go through all of that stuff in the course. So in doing that, I'm just curious. I'm posting another poll. Is that something that you would be interested in? I totally get that there's a, well, maybe it depends on how expensive it is. And all. I, I told, this is not a commitment. Okay. It just helps me. I'm, I'm a, uh, I'm an independent, like one person company type thing. And this just helps with planning and stuff like that. And I, I really just do appreciate it. So my only ask of you uh, today is just let me know what you think. Okay. So let's go through some of these questions. Uh, let's see. So Don asked a question uh, a little while ago and he said, as a primary, as primarily a SharePoint framework developer, I feel like I should refactor my services to use graph instead of SharePoint rest. Any pros or cons? So this is a big question and it really doesn't deal with the exam. And so I don't want to, I really should have said earlier when I punted this that I don't want to, I don't want to dwell on this too, too much. Um, but it, it depends. Um, there, if what you have right now works with the SharePoint rest API, then I wouldn't change it. Um, I've had this debate with the, with the team, the graph team, and they say, well, the SharePoint team doesn't ever push using our API. And I'm like, well, here's the problem. If I want to use the SharePoint REST API, I don't have to go do anything with special permissions. The user has permissions or they don't. But if I want to use graph, I have to go rewrite my code and I now have to get an administrator to grant my tenants uh, permissions to use the endpoints that I want to talk to at Microsoft Graph. That's, that's a burden. Um, why would I want to do that? Well, because you're going to be using the same, you can, you can have relationships between like a user and some data they have in a list and then uh, data and then their user information as well that you can get from Microsoft Graph and you can do relationships a lot easier than having to jump between multiple APIs. Fair point. But if you're just getting data from SharePoint lists, I don't think there's really a reason to do it, but that's just my take on it. Okay, so... Um, Rune's got a question. Can you elaborate more on the adaptiveness of the exam? Does it identify your weak spots and grill you more on that? No, it doesn't do that. It's just more that it, if you, if, so I can't speak specifically to this because this is, this is like proprietary stuff for Microsoft and I, I can't go into detail on it, but where I said that there's 20 to 25% of the questions are going to be on graph, depending how you're doing, you're going to get more or less. So, if you effectively are, have proven, think about it like this. If I've proven, if I ask you a bunch of questions, like, do you know addition and subtraction? I'm not going to ask you 50 questions on it. I only need to ask you a few questions. Like if I ask you like three or four questions, you generally can prove to me that you know addition and subtraction. But if you kind of mess up one or two, I may ask you one or two more questions just to see if that was just a mistake, right? It's something like, think about it a little bit like that. Um, can you go back to the previous sections or are you locked out once you leave the section like other exams? I, I don't, it's like other, I believe it's like other exams in the beta. We were allowed to move around, but I, and I don't know why this would be any different from any of the other certification exams where can you jump around to different sections and can you go back and review your review, your stuff? I don't, I don't know. Um, let's see. Will they be test, uh, Muhammad, will they be testing all the SDKs or do we choose the SDK we want to be tested on? Uh, no and no. You, they do not test you on all the SDKs. I mentioned this at the beginning. They don't test you on all the SDKs and they don't, you don't get to choose. The exam is the exam. You should be familiar mostly with .NET Core, but there may be a TypeScript slash JavaScript question that shows up. But it, the graph section is almost entirely .NET Core. I'm pretty sure of that. Do we need to focus on the graph API beta version or V1? Focus on V1. There's no beta stuff in here. And I wouldn't expect, I mean, I don't know what their plans are to update the exam, but it's like V1 as of like September, October of 2019, because the exam was released in November. No, the certification was debuted in November that's probably not true. I'd probably say, I say first quarter of 2020 because they did update some questions based on what the beta results were. But don't, so they did update some questions on the exam for the graph V1 SDK as it was V1 at the beginning of 2020. They, there are no beta questions 
uh, or third party things uh, on the exam. Uh, Kathleen, we are able to do this from the site collection, correct? I don't know what that is in relation to. If you could restate your, your question, Kathleen, that would help because I'm not sure. That came in about 10 minutes ago and I'm not sure what I was talking about exactly in about 10 minutes ago. Um, Ryan, does each of these sections, so the different workloads, so each, does each of the different workloads have self-paced learning like the one linked in this webinar? Yes, all five of them have self-paced learning associated with them uh, up on Microsoft Learn. Uh, and I will give you links to each one of those um, in each one of these different webinars. Uh, Michael, I'd like to review the material you presented today. Can you tell us when and where the presentation we made available for review? Uh, where uh, is the link at the bottom of the slide that you see right here? I will update the blog post that that points to with a link to the recording, the on-demand recording that you can watch when it becomes available. When is that gonna be? My best guess is later today or tomorrow. I can't guarantee it because um, uh, these different webinar platform systems are all under significant load in the current uh, uh, work from home and so many people doing stuff uh, and doing uh, virtual meetings and stuff these days that there may be a delay. Um, I expected to get the one from Tuesday like a day or two later and it was done before I finished my lunch that same day. So that was surprising. I was able to get it out pretty quick. All I'd say is that if you watch um, the Voitanos Twitter feed or, and, or watch the Voitanos Facebook page, um, I will put an update out when it's available. Um, and I'll probably do an email out at the end of the week, just kind of recapping the two that we did this week with links to the recordings and the future ones that are coming for next week. Will you please reshow your slide for the users uh, section? So I'm gonna, I wanna stick on this slide. So you, the recording will be available, but I wanna, I wanna stick on this slide for people to be able to grab this link because this is the one that's most important. Um, I understand the request, but I'm, I'm, we're limited on time and I don't wanna start jumping around. Um, hopefully it's lifetime, no expiry date. So I'm, I'm guessing that you're saying how long is the certification good for? I don't know of there being an expiration for it. Um, I'm not aware. I'm not aware of it being, of it expiring, um, but things change. So who knows? Uh, Jan, I'm assuming Jan, not Jan, but Jan, um, as a web developer, I've used graph endpoints for stuff like creating group, get user and so on. My question is, is the .NET Core SDK very different? It's fluent. It's a fluent API, which means that you do a lot of like get request dot get user dot request dot filter dot select dot. And it, it, it is, it, it's different because when you're doing, like I only work with the REST API. When I, it's my choice, I only work with the REST API. I don't work with this. I don't like SDKs. Um, and it's different in the way that you make your request. So is it very different? No. Um, a point that I made in the last webinar is that you won't be asked to write any code. If you understand how all this stuff works, you will be asked, you will be given, code will show up in two different ways in, the, in questions. You're either gonna get a question that shows you code with the answer saying, what does it do? And you pick which one that says what it's doing, or you get a question and it says like, which one of these code samples would solve this problem? And you get four different options. So in my opinion, if you are at least moderately familiar with the SDK, and you know the Java that you know the REST API, so you you generally can figure it out. But that's not like a uniform thing across the board. Okay. Um, are there any questions about PMP JS and uh, PMP APIs? I'm like ninety nine percent that the answer is no. Um, from Laura, I'm almost 99% that there is there are no questions about the PMP uh, APIs because PMP is not, I don't believe, oh my God, I'm part of the PMP group and I'm gonna screw this up. PMP is not supported by Microsoft. It's a community led thing. And so therefore it is not, like you're not required to know it as a SharePoint, sorry, as a Microsoft 365 certified developer. Okay, so I'm gonna, let's see, I'm gonna, all right, so all the questions that are in right now, these are the ones I'm gonna go through. I know we're at, at 
uh, the end of the hour, but I'm going to get through these as quick as I can. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'll stop. Um, Jose, what is the approach to use Microsoft Graph in projects that only will lives in query SharePoint items when using Graph or when only using SharePoint search service? I, I kind of answered that earlier with, um, with Don's question and that's really not, I'm happy to answer that, but that's a longer question that I need I get more information on to be able to answer it. And that's not really the subject that we're dealing with. This is not a, how do I do graph development? And when do I use certain things? This is more about what is the certification. So I wanna try and stay on topic. More than welcome though, to please post a question to like the comments on the recording for this webinar or um, you know, send something to us on Facebook. I'm more than happy to, to go through and answer it that way. Um, Kathleen, never mind. You basically answered it. Oh, okay. So that was an easy one to answer. Uh, Michael, oh, much appreciated. Got that. Um, Praveen, did they test? Did they test whether Graph API supported in none supported cases like capabilities? Praveen, I don't understand the question. Um, I see in none supported cases. I'm not really sure what that means. Um, Let's see. Uh, Ryan, are there any PowerShell questions? I don't want to say absolutely. I don't want, no, I'm not going to say no, because that's a 100% statement, but I'm going to, I'll, I'll say with a 99.9% .9 certainty, and I'll put a hundred bucks on it, that the answer is no. Um, it's all, this is development stuff. Which, which, well, I don't consider PowerShell development, but uh, it is, I don't think there's anything PowerShell in any of the exam. Um, there may, I know for a fact there's none, there's no PowerShell in any of the, um, self-paced, uh, learning. And I don't believe, I didn't see any questions on PowerShell, but I can't say that there's absolutely none because I, I didn't see all the questions. I only saw the ones that I saw when I took the exam. But I don't, I'm pretty sure you don't have to know that. Um, Praveen, the SharePoint framework course, which I currently offer is lifetime once registered. Yeah, so it, yes. So it's not a, it's, it, you, when, you, when you buy it, you get access to the course and you get access to any updates and new stuff that gets added to it in the future. And it's one time, lifetime. And that is our last question. Hey, everybody, thank you very, very much for joining us today. I really do appreciate it. Um, I hope you learned something. Hope there, this was uh, useful to you. Um, if it was, raise your hand if you can. Just let me know if this was helpful. I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing you guys uh, in the future. Um, and, you know, hey, one thing I'd, I'd love this, what I'd love to see is, you know, help. If you want to help me with this, I mean, this is a free webinar. You want to help me out with it? Go over to Twitter, uh, go over to Facebook where we mentioned this webinar. I put a tweet out right before this webinar, webinar started from Voitanos. Um, retweet that with a comment and just say it, how much you liked it. And uh, so other people can see it and that would help because then other people can go through and register and, and um, see the future ones and that would help me out and I'd appreciate it. So with that, hope everyone has a fantastic day, have a fantastic weekend, stay safe, stay healthy. I hope to see you next Tuesday when we talk about SharePoint framework or SharePoint, well, SharePoint framework and um, with the uh, MS 600 exam. Bye, everybody.